Hello, everyone. This is Julie from Patchworks, and I am so excited that we are going to have a super exciting presentation tonight. This is our very first Must Sew TV with a special guest, and we are so excited to be Asian having tonight. something. This is our very first Must Sew TV. Let me turn off this other sound here so that we just making sure that we are live with everything. Okay. Since a bunch of you have hopped on, I am going to introduce you to my very dear friend, Rhonda from Schmetz Needles, who has a lot of great things to share with us tonight. Hi, Rhonda. Hi, Julie. Thanks so much for inviting me here tonight. Oh, I'm we're so excited to have you. I'm delighted to be here and I'm coming to you from my own sewing room in the <gasps> Chicago area. <laughs> and don't you think every sewing room should have an eight foot banner of the Smets color chart? <laughs> I think so. I think I need one right behind me. So. <laughs> okay, well, let me go ahead and get started. So hello, everyone, and welcome. Uh, gosh, I wish I was meeting with you in person, but that's the way of the world right now. And so we are flexible, right? We are flexible. So we're going to talk about needles tonight and specifically Smets sewing machine needles for our home sewing machines. Uh, what's my mission here tonight? Well, I want to elevate your respect for that little hard working two inch piece of steel. I hope to remove some of the perceived mystery about needles. And overall, I want to elevate your confidence in your needle selection. So let me go ahead and get started. I first want to show you my Smet Super Demo Needle. When I was traveling in person, I was going to 2025 events throughout North America to teach about Smet's needles. And I always traveled with my Smet Super Demo Needle. This is 17 inches tall and anatomically correct. Well, I'm still traveling with it, but now virtually. <laughs> no TSA inspections with uh, tr virtual travel. So let's first talk about the parts of the needle and their function, because once you know uh, the parts of the needle and their purpose, it helps influence your uh, decision on what needle type and size to use. So we'll go over some basics. I'll talk about the Smets color chart, how to read the needle pack. Then I'll ask for any questions. And then we'll talk about specific needles, specific needles for piecing and quilting, sewing with knits, et cetera. And then I always have a mystery question to answer. So here's our Smets uh, demo needle, 17 inches. I've got it on a wooden base here, but I think even virtually, you can see at the very top of your needle is a beveled edge. And you might think, oh, so what, a beveled edge? Well, I want you to imagine sitting in front of your sewing machine to insert a new needle. And you don't have a lot of wiggle room. So the top of your needle is beveled for easier insertion into the needle holder. Our home sewing machines, 99% of all of our home sewing machines require a flat shank. A flat shank, again, for perfect positioning into your needle holder. Your Smets needles, and I hope you've noticed, uh, the last couple years that your Smets needles have color bands, either one or two bands of color, and we'll talk about the color bands shortly. We have the length of the needle, which is referred to as the blade of the needle. And on your blade, Smets actually measures the, um, the uh, diameter of your, your needle to determine the needle size. So yes, the Smets needle size is actually determined by an actual measurement of the blade of the needle. On top of your blade, how many of you've noticed a groove? 
yes, you can actually see and feel the groove on your little two-inch piece of steel. And what is the purpose of the groove? Well, the groove is going to cradle your thread so it moves evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle to the eye. Your thread should not be flip-flopping back and forth. It should move evenly and smoothly down the length of the needle so you get a nice clean stitch. We have the point and the tip, and these change according to different needle types. And also on the back of your needle, how many of you have noticed this little indentation above the eye of the needle? This is referred to as the scarf of the needle. And the scarf has a very important function. When your needle passes through your fabric and your throat plate, your bobbin hook has to come up and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So your bobbin hook needs passing room. That's why this is carved out. So the bobbin hook can pass by and catch that top thread in order to create the stitch. So those are your basic parts of the needle. But, you, but uh, let's see, let's just get a cleaner view of our needle. So Julie, would you um, start the slide here? Yes, our Smets needles and move to the next slide where I've got a nice image of the Smets needle and the parts. Okay, and can you move that forward? Let's see, I cannot move that, Julie. I, can you control F or go to the F screen? Oh, okay, let me try that. All right. Oh, still not working. Okay. Go to, uh, I'm gonna stop the share and I'm gonna go to plan B because I do like to be prepared because sometimes that's the way uh, technology um, happens because you know, it's never user error. <laughs> so, okay, so um, we talked about the parts of the needle and there's one part that I haven't um, mentioned yet. And that is the eye of the needle. And I consider the eye to be one of the most important features to the needle. So let's just look a little bit closer um, at the eye. So your everyday needle, the universal needle, the eye is about 40% the width of the blade. But look at the embroidery needle eye and you can see that the eye is wider. And when you look at the eye of the top stitch and the metallic, wow, you can see that the eye is not only wider, but it's also elongated. So when you're sewing, what does a larger eye mean to you? A larger eye means there's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. So if you have problems with threads that are breaking or shredding, what are you gonna do? Well, you either move up a needle size or change to a different needle type uh, that has a larger eye. So threads that break and shred, yeah, it happens to us all. So just um, change up a needle size or change to a different needle type with a larger eye. So I hope I've solved a situation that happens to us frequently. No worries, just change your needle. The next thing I wanna talk about is the Smets color chart. Yes, you can see the color chart behind me. But let me show you this smaller one that I think you can see just a little bit easier. So I wanna make sure you know how to read the color chart. So on the one side of the chart, you'll see that there's a color assigned to the different needle types. So each needle type has a different color assigned. On the other side of our chart, we see it's labeled needle size. So we see each needle size has a specific color assigned. Well, now let's look at the needle um, between the two charts. The top color band identifies the needle type. So on this top color band, we see it's yellow. 
So we scoot off to the needle type column and we see, okay, yellow is a stretch needle. We look at the bottom color band on your needle and you see rose color. So now we look off to the needle size chart and we move down until we see rose and we see that's a size 7511. So two bands of color, the top band identifies the needle type and the lower band um, identifies the uh, needle size. Let me just show you this one here, there's less glare. Okay, so let's talk about a couple specific needles, give specific examples. My favorite go-to needle for all kinds of sewing, piecing, quilting, fashion, et cetera, is a Microtech size 8012. So what would the two color bands be? Well, Microtex. We're going to look right here. We find Microtex under needle type and we see, okay, that's purple. So for a Microtex, the top color band will be purple. And for size 8012, well, now we look under the needle size and we see, okay, 8012 is orange. So purple and orange is a Microtex size 8012. Using the chart again, what if your needle has two bands of orange? What kind of needle would that be? And what would the needle size be? Two bands of orange. Well, we look off to the needle type and we see, okay, orange, that's a Jersey needle. Now we look off to the needle size and we just scroll down and we see orange is a size 8012. So two bands of orange uh, would be a Jersey size 8012 needle. Now take a closer look under needle type and we see the very first needle type listed is a universal needle. But wow, there's no color assigned. In fact, that um, area is X'd out. What does that mean? Universal needles will have only one band of color and that's to identify your needle size. Universal needles have only one band of color to identify needle size. So if I have a universal size 8012, well, what's the color band? Well, we can see right here on the chart that 8012 is orange. Or if I have a universal size 9014, I've got a single blue band for universal. So I hope this makes sense to you, especially after you've taken your needle pack or your needle out of the pack and now you wonder, hmm, I wonder what needle type and size that is. So your color codes will definitely help you identify your needle type and size. Okay, so next, let's talk about um, the actual needle package. Let me get my flyer here. And actually, let me just pull a pack of needles. So universal needle, yes, the workhorse of all needle types. So let's use this as a sample as to what all these numbers and letters mean on your needle pack. So at the very bottom of your pack, you'll find um, the needle size. The needle size is always at the bottom of your needle package. So on this sample here, we've got assorted sizes. We have sizes 7010, 8012, and 9014. All right, so those are your needle sizes. But how many of you have looked above the needle size and seen 130 705H and wondered, what the heck does that mean? <laughs> Is that important? And do I need to know what that number means? Well, 130 705H is the needle system. Don't be afraid of that. 130-705H is the needle system. What that means is 130-705 means that your needle has a flat shank. Again, 99% of all of our home sewing machines require a flat shank needle. 130-705. The H translates from a German word that means scarf. This indentation on the backside of the needle that allows the top thread 
to catch in order to create the stitch. So H translates from a German word that means scarf. So needle system 130 slash 705 H is a flat shank needle with the scarf that 99% of all of our home sewing machines require. So don't be intimidated by that number, but now you're informed. That is your needle system. Above the needle system, you see the name, the needle type spelled out. So on this instance here, it's a universal needle. Above that, you see the Smets name typed out. And with the clear packaging, you can see the color bands, the color bands. So we know the two needles on the left-hand side have green bands. So we know that those are universal size 7010. The next two needles oh, to the right have orange bands. So we know that those are universal size 8012. And the needle on the far right has a single blue band. So we know that's a universal size 9014. So lots of information on your little pack of needles. Now I wanna go over just one more pack and let's review the information again. So again, at the very bottom, you have your needle size. So this is size 9014. Above that is your needle system 130 705 H. So we know that's a flat shank needle with a scarf appropriate for most of our home sewing machines. But take a closer look on this sample here. On the needle system line, after 130.705H, you've got a dash E, E for embroidery. On some of your other needle types, it might be a dash Q for quilting, or M for micro tax, or J for jeans, or S for stretch, etc. So you've got a lot of information packed on your needle system line. Above that, you've got your needle type spelled out. Above that, Sometimes on some of your packaging, you'll still see the German word for needle. Above that is the Smets name. And again, because of the clear packaging, you can see the color bands. So these are embroidery needles. So what's the top color band? Well, that's red for embroidery. And the lower color band is blue for size 9014. So lots of information right here on your single um, pack of needles. Don't be intimidated, it, but you should be familiar with, with the, the information. So, okay, Julie, are there any questions that have come up so far? The big question so far is why would, or in what circumstance would I use a universal needle over a microtexture? Good question. And you know what? I'm going to start to answer that in the next section. Do Perfect. you have any more questions for right now? No. Okay. Well, next I want to talk about five specific needle types for piecing and for quilting. Because I'm guessing most of you love to piece and quilt. And so do I. And I do have a favorite needle. But from my travels, I've done both formal and informal surveys. And my sales reports um, verify this information. So there are five needle types popular for piecing and for quilting. And I bet you can guess uh, what one of the needle types is. It's the most popular needle type of, of all needle types. And that is the universal size 8012 needle. The universal is the most popular needle type. Lots of famous quilters use the universal needle for both piecing and for quilting. What's so special about the universal needle? Well, it has a slightly rounded point and it works with all kinds of fabrics, whether they're woven or with knits. But right now we're gonna talk specifically about piecing and quilting. And the universal needle is definitely right in the mix of things. Four other needle types for piecing and quilting in no particular order are, first we have the jeans needle, also known as a denim needle. Does that surprise you? The jeans needle for piecing and quilting? 
Well, how many of you like to make jeans quilts? <laughs> yeah, or maybe you like to sew heavy flannel quilts. Or maybe you like to make those heavy duty raggy quilts and you need a hardy needle for all of those different techniques. What's so special about the jeans needle? The jeans needle has a reinforced blade, a reinforced blade so that when the needle passes through your fabric and the throat plate, there's less needle deflection, less movement of the needle as the stitch is made. So with the reinforced blade and your heavier fabrics, you're going to get a cleaner stitch. So the specific uh, feature to the jeans needle is that it has that reinforced blade. So you get cleaner stitches when you're working with denims, you're making denim quilts, uh, flannel quilts, and definitely those heavy duty raggy quilts. Another popular needle type for piecing and quilting is the top stitch needle. The top stitch needle. And as we saw earlier in that diagram about the needle eyes, the top stitch needle has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. The top stitch needle has a slightly rounded point. Another popular needle type for piecing and quilting? Well, just as the name suggests, is the quilting needle. <laughs> the quilting needle. What's the story with the quilting needle? Well, the quilting needle has a, a special taper specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. A special taper specifically designed for piecing and for quilting. And the top stitch needle also has a slightly rounded point. That leaves one more needle type popular for piecing and for quilting. And can you guess what that needle type is? That's the Microtex needle. The generic name for a Smets Microtex is a sharp needle. What's so special about the sharp needle or the Microtex needle, it has what's referred to as a very slim acute point. Very slim acute point. So with the Microtex needle, you're going to get the most precise stitches. And because the Microtex needle has that very slim acute point, the Microtex needle is going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. What does that mean? You're going to have to change your Microtex needle more frequently than any of your other needle types. So the Microtex has a very slim acute point. So if you're taking notes tonight, let's just do a quick review of the five needle types popular for piecing and for quilting. We've got the universal needle, the workhorse of all needle types, which has that slightly rounded point. We have the jeans needle, which has that reinforced blade, which is great when you're sewing through heavier fabrics like jeans, flannels, and definitely those heavy duty raggy quilts. The reinforced blade means there's less needle deflection for a cleaner stitch. We have the top stitch needle, which has that elongated eye. So there's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. We have the quilting needle, which is specifically designed for piecing and quilting. It has that very special taper. And finally, we have the Microtex needle, also known as a sharp needle. And the Microtex, you're going to get a very clean, precise stitch. And because it has that very slim acute point, the Microtex needle is going to dull quicker than any of your other needle types. So you will need to replace the Microtex needle more frequently than any of your other needle types. So I've just shown you five needle types popular for piecing and quilting. And guess what? Julie has a special for you tonight. So you can get all five of these needle packs with the Smets color chart on a handy little laminated luggage tag, which, wow, I was using it a lot when I was traveling. 
but you can put this on your sewing machine or hang it on your bulletin board uh, just to have your color chart handy. And the pack also comes, or the bundle also comes with the ever popular Smets ABC Pocket Guide, which is the foundation to tonight's class. So Julie will have more information on how you can get this. Um, you can just go to her website and buy it direct. Okay, so we covered piecing and quilting needles. Next, let's just move on a little bit to uh, sewing with knits. I know you all like to piece and quilt, but wow, how many of you have been sewing with knits recently? Because knit fabrics aren't like the knits of days past. They're fabulous. They have beautiful weights, textures, bodies, patterns, colors, etc., and they're really wonderful to use. But part of the success of sewing with knits is having the appropriate needle. So there's two needle types that you must have when you're sewing with knits. And the first is the jersey needle. The jersey needle, generically known as a ballpoint needle. The jersey needle has a medium ballpoint. The other needle type that you need when sewing with knits is a stretch needle, a stretch needle. And guess what? The stretch needle also has a medium ballpoint, but the stretch needle has a narrower eye and a deeper scarf. And those two features make a world of difference in how the needle reacts to your fabric and your thread. So if you're sewing on a knit, well, how do you know which needle type to use? A, whoops, a stretch, a stretch or a jersey? Well, there is a, a rule of thumb. Sometimes you have to break the rule of thumb, but I would say this rule of thumb works 80% of the time. If your fabric has lycra, spandex, or elastic, you're going to use the stretch needle, the stretch needle. If it's just a regular knit, a regular jersey knit, you're going to use the jersey uh, needle. Sometimes stretch and jersey are interchangeable, but not always. So it's good to have both needle types on hand. The other thing that I want to mention is that how many of you like to sew with minky or cuddle fabrics? You know, when I do these classes in the fall and winter, I'm usually wearing um, a minky vest or jacket that I've made. And you need a specific needle when you're sewing with minky um, cuddle fabrics or their stretchy plush fabrics. And that's the stretch size 9014. Even Shannon Fabrics, then manufacturers, uh, Cuddle Fabric and Minky, they suggest the stretch, uh, the Smet Stretch 9014. So it makes a world of difference in how your fabric relates to your needle, your fabric, and your thread, and your technique. So again, when you're sewing with uh, knits, you need two needle types, a jersey and a stretch. And you know, sometimes it does happen. I was making a t-shirt a couple months ago. It had 3% lycra. So of course I started with the stretch needle, but I didn't quite like the stitch quality. So I just switched to the jersey and in that instance, it worked beautifully. So don't be afraid to change your needle type and sometimes your needle size too. So sewing with knits, you need the right needle. Okay. Other needles that we have are the Smets Chrome Needles. How many of you have used Smets Chrome Needles? This is our premium line of, of, of needles. It's a high performance needle. You know, it used to be that our needles, or our machines would sew 400, 600 stitches um, a minute. Well, now how fast are our machines going? Yeah, they're doing 1,200, 14, even maybe 1,600 stitches per minute. So our, our needles are working really hard for our machines. So Chrome can handle uh, the speed of your, your, your sewing and your stitches. Chrome resists heat and wear. 
So currently, there's only seven different needle types that are available in Smets Chrome in the best selling uh, needle sizes. So um, the first, first off, this is the collection right here of Smets Chrome. And uh, you'll notice that the packaging is very colorful, right? So you, you'll probably find these in your, your store. And the packaging is based on the Smets color chart. So just as the top band of color identifies the needle type, this top triangle identifies the needle type. So purple for microtax and the lower corner color identifies the needle size. So this is a microtax size 60 slash eight. This is another microtax, but it's got that emerald green. So we know that's a size 70, 10. And here's the microtax um, size 80, 12. So not, I'm not going to go through all of these needles because I have even more exciting news. We introduced the Smets Chrome into the North American marketplace in 2016. These needles became bestsellers. They became wildly popular. So now what's happening is that all of our needles are transitioning to Smets Chrome. Smets Chrome. And you might be sewing with some right now. If you've bought uh, Smets needles recently, especially a universal needle from Julie, you may have been using a Smets Chrome needle already. So the needles, um, all the Smets uh, needles are transitioning from a nickel coating to chrome. And it's going to serve all of us beautifully. And we're not raising the prices either. <laughs> So if you've bought universal needles, such as this pack right here, if you've noticed that the needles might be a little bit shinier, well, you probably have a chrome pack or chrome needles in, in your pack. So we'll be changing the packaging soon so that all of the needle uh, packaging is consistent. But uh, right now, the uh, nickel-plated needles are transitioning to chrome, and you might be using chrome already. So again, the feature about Chrome is it resists heat and wear. So we can handle all of our, our stitching with even more ease. So that's my huge announcement for tonight as far as needles go. But I have one more needle type that I want to um, introduce you to, and that is the Smets Super Nonstick Needle, the Super Nonstick. And I think even virtually, you can probably see that these needles look a little bit different, right? They're kind of a gunmetal color or charcoal gray, and that's the nonstick surface. These needles also have a reinforced blade for less needle deflection and cleaner stitches and an extra large eye. So wow, three big um, features. So when are you going to use these super nonstick needles? Well, how many if you do machine embroidery or machine applique? And what happens when you're working with those sticky stabilizers? Yeah, they have a tendency to gum up your needle, right? All those sticky stabilizers, um, the adhesives get warm and they gum up your needle. So the super nonstick will resist the adhesives from from your sticky stabilizers, your fusibles, and your spray adhesives. So again, the Super Nonstick, a great needle choice for machine embroidery, machine applique, if you work with um, oil cloth, splash fabric, vinyl. How many of you uh, like to sew on vinyl? Maybe you make little um, clutches or um, cosmetic pouches. And what happens when you sew on vinyl? Yeah. The vinyl gets warm, and now the vinyl is hugging your needle. <laughs> so the uh, Super Nonstick is a great needle choice, so it will resist the vinyl from hugging your needle. And one other application, when you're working with that sticky, kind of hard-to-use hoop and loop tape, the Super Nonstick is a great needle choice. First, because it's got that reinforced blade, and secondly, it's got that nonstick surface, so it can uh, resist the gooiness that often um, uh, kind of trips us up sometimes when we're sewing. 
So the super nonstick needle. Yeah, so all of these needles you can get from Julie at uh, Patched Works. So I'm just so excited about um, the needles that we have and that the needles are transitioning from nickel to the, the chrome. So Julie, that's my uh, part on the different types of needles. Do you have any more questions that you want to ask me? We have so many questions. Okay, let's go. All right. If I were sewing with batik, what is oh. the, my needle preference? Yes, yes. You know what? I sometimes forget to mention on um, batik. Generally, for batik, the Microtex, the Microtex needle is a great needle choice. Why? It has that very slim, acute point. Because even when you pre-wash your batiks, you know they're still tightly woven. And even when you pre-wash, there's still oftentimes dye residue. So the Microtex will just penetrate through your, your, um, your fabric quite easily. So yes, good question. Microtex use on definitely on your batiks. Good question, thank you. Next question from Christy. How do I know if I need an 80 or a 90 size? Oh, great question. I always like to answer this. Okay, so I do have a rule of thumb for that. Uh, and I call it my 80-12-40 rule. <laughs> so what's that about? Well, 40 weight thread is the every everyday thread. Doesn't matter what the brand is, but 40 weight is the most common, most used weight of thread. For 40 weight thread, I normally use an 80-12 needle. So 40 weight thread with an 80-12 needle. That's my rule of thumb. Maybe for you, it might be a 75-11 or a 70-10, but I think a good standard is a 40 weight thread to use a size 80-12 needle. Now, so if I'm going to be using a heavier weight of thread, then I know that I need a needle that's heavier or larger than an, um, an 8012. So now I know I need to go up to at least a 9014, or if it's even heavier, I need to move up to a size 100 slash 16, depending on, again, on how heavy your thread is. So again, using 40 weight with an 8012 needle, if I'm uh, working with a finer thread, well, now I know I need a needle size less than an 8012. So now maybe I'm going to go down to a 7010 or a 659, et cetera. I know that um, micro threads are very popular right now. How many of you have been using the micro threads? Wowza, they're really super fine. <laughs> so, what needle size should you use? Well, probably either um, a size 60 slash 8 or a 65 slash 9. So you kind of have to judge. You know, sometimes what you what works for you may not work for your friend. So find what works best for you. Again, using the benchmark of a 40 weight thread with a 80-12 uh, needle. And I just to give you um, a specific example, through my local quilt shop, I did a year-long um, quilt project with quarterly due dates. And yes, I was using beautiful, I wanted a cheerful quilt. So I had yellows and purples and all these cheery colors, K-facet fabrics. So it's 10 o'clock at night. I get my Microtex 8012 needles out. I start my first block because heaven forbid I test first. And I'm thinking, wow, you know, my stitch is okay, but I don't really like the stitch quality. And I'm thinking this is kind of odd. So I switch to another um, Microtex size 8012 and the same thing is happening. So as you can imagine, I do have a quite generous uh, needle stash, which, yeah, you can kind of see behind me. I've got a, a Smets display behind me. So now I decide, well, let me go down in needle size. So I went down to a micro tax size 70, 10, and voila, sewed like butter, sewed like butter. So sometimes you have to make adjustments. 
And I always like to say it's a dance. Your needle type and your needle size is a dance and you're the leader. You lead, you decide. It's a dance between your machine, your fabric, your thread, your technique. My, maybe you kind of push or pull your fabric and your needle. So sometimes you have to make um, you have to make adjust adjustments. And I will just add because wow, this was huge for me. When I finished that quilt project, I actually entered it into International Quilt Festival and it was selected. <laughs> wow. I finished it about a week before the due date. And believe me, that was the furthest thing from my mind was entering a contest, but I had it done and what the heck. I entered it and it was it hung at three international quilt festivals, two in uh, two in Chicago and one in Houston. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> okay, so yes, good question. Needle size. All right, we have another question. What is the technical numbering system? Where the top, why is it 80, 12? Why don't they just say 12? Why don't they just say 80? Okay, good question. Um, all right, so Smets is not the only needle manufacturer in the world, right? There are other needle companies no. too. <laughs> Sorry, but they are, but mm -hmm. of course the Smets is the best. All right, so I already mentioned that Smets sizing is based on an actual measurement of the blade. All right, so they measure this area and they come up with a number and they're using the metric uh, system, right? Smets is a German company. They work with the metric system. So they get a measurement that's like a 0.80 or a 0.90, and they take that number times 100 to come up with the sizes that we're familiar with. Sizes 70, 80, 90, et cetera. But because Smets is not the only needle manufacturer in the other in the world, there are other companies and they use what's referred to as the international, the Asian or the singer sizing systems. Well, many decades ago, the needle companies got together and said, hey, let's standardize our sizing. So they all agree that a size 80 will always equal a size 12 or a size 14 will always equal um, a size 90. So in your books and patterns, sometimes you'll see just one number. You'll see a size 12. So, okay, a size 12 is also known as a size 80. Or you'll see um, the book says use a size 90. Okay, that's also known as a size 14. So don't let um, the two sizing systems trip you up. It's just uh, the metric that um, Smets Germany uses. So sizes 70, 80, 90, et cetera. And then the other needle systems that um, cross-reference with um, the metric. So I hope that helps um, explain. <laughs> that was great. That was great. And then one other question that I have here from Deborah. If you are using a combination of cuddle and quilting cotton, so like you're quilting a quilt and you have a traditional cotton front, batting and then cuddle on the back, what needle do you recommend? You know, I would start with the stretch needle. You know, the the finic the finic is wow, that's like a tongue twister. <laughs> Cuddle is sometimes kind of finicky. You know, it kind of shifts and moves. You've got to really pin it well with long pins. I would start with the stretch needle, probably uh, definitely the size 9014. And if you don't like the stitch quality, well then try something else. Maybe it's a universal needle or even the super nonstick, but probably that stretch needle will work just fine for you. Awesome. I think I scooped up all of the questions. Okay, well, Lots you know, there's, questions. there's always one mystery question, right? We all ask that, or we all should ask that while we're sewing. And that is, how long does a needle last? 
Yes, do you ask that? Do you ask yourself that? How long does a needle last? And the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> if you hit a pin and you bend the needle, well, maybe that's three seconds. If you're not a very aggressive sewer and um, you don't push or pull your fabric underneath the needle, maybe you get 20 hours of sewing. I've had power quilters come up to say, Rhonda, I change my needle every four to five hours. Because these power quilters, they're in the groove. They're listening, they're watching, uh, they're in the groove and they hear and they see any little inconsistencies that might happen when they're sewing. So they're changing their needles every four to five hours. So let's just average it out to uh, eight hours of sewing time you need to change the needle. That's just an average, a rule of thumb. I think it's more important to talk about the actual clues to change the needle when you're actually sewing. So what are some of the clues when you're sewing that you need to change the needle? Well, first of all, what's happening to your thread? Is your thread breaking and shredding? Well, hello, that's a clue. <laughs> yes, your needle might be dull. It might be dull. But there's another thing that happens if you're not changing your needle frequently enough, the thread can actually wear a groove in the eye of the needle. And that's not a good thing. An additional groove in the eye of the needle is going to break and shred your thread. So what's the solution? Yeah, just change the needle. Get a new needle. Change the needle. So clue one, number one, threads that break and shred. What's another clue? Yeah, what's happening to your fabric? Is your fabric kind of pulling? Is it tucking? Is it um, snagging? When the needle um, goes hits the fabric, is it kind of pushing your fabric down into the throat plate? That's not a good thing. That's a clue. It, all of those are clues to change the needle. So what's the solution? Yeah, just get a new needle. Just get a new needle. Okay, what about your stitches? Are they skipping? Um, are they uneven? Yep, those are clues to change the needle. Or maybe you say, well, Rhonda, I'm sitting at my machine. I'm sewing in a straight line. How can my stitches look kind of wiggly squiggly? Well, that's your needle saying, he hello, I'm dull. <laughs> change me. And then there's one more clue that sometimes people overlook, but I bet many of you are familiar with, and that is that our machines talk to us. Hopefully when you're sewing, you're in a bubble, right? That bubble of joy, you've just pushed all the problems beyond the bubble and you're in your groove. Your machine is humming along. And then you start to hear a little click, click, clicking sound. Okay, that's your needle and saying, hey, we've done a lot of work here. It's time to change me. If you ignore that, the needle's now going pop, 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 pop. Now your needle is saying, hello, I gave you a clue. It's time to change me. Don't wait any longer. Change me. And if you ignore the clicking and the popping sound, now what is your machine doing? Your machine is yelling at you. It's going clunk, 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 clunk. <laughs> it's yelling at you, change me, change me. You've worked me hard. I'm tired. I'm overworked. Change me. So we're not just trying to sell you more needles, but we want you to have a quality stitch. When you think about it, your machine, it doesn't matter if you spent a couple hundred dollars on it or if you spent thousands of dollars on it. When you come right down to it, your needle uh, is essential to that quality stitch and to a smooth working machine. So your machine depends on that little two inch piece of steel, the Smets needle. So don't be afraid to change it. <laughs> You've spent a lot of money on your beautiful fabrics, right? And you've spent a lot of money on your threads, your beautiful threads and all those colors. 
And what about the books and patterns that you're following to create um, your designs, your creations? And then don't forget your time. Your time is an investment. So we don't want you just to uh, overlook the needle, but we want you to have a quality experience, not only from your machine to your fabrics, to your patterns, to your thread, right down to the, to the needles. So yes, needles don't last forever. They need to be changed. So follow those clues to change the needle. And if you are ordering um, or you're picking up your Smets bundle of piecing and quilting needles, well, it comes with the little Smets ABC pocket guide and inside are the clues to change the needle plus a wonderful image of a doll needle. Now here's the scoop on this needle. I think even virtually you can tell that this needle is definitely dull. And you can see all those irregularities on the point and the tip, the striations and the burrs, etc. So what's that gonna do to your fabric and thread? Yeah, it's gonna rip it up. <laughs> but here's the thing. If you use your naked eye, you can't always tell that the needle is dull. This image here has actually been magnified many, many times to make the point that needles get dull. So change the needle. Now, the other thing I wanna say about changing your needles is in the real world, you might be working on a quilt project A with a specific needle. And now you have to make um, an emergency birthday gift. And let's just say it's um, a little t-shirt. All right, so you're using a different needle type and size. So now you've come back to your original needle that you, you know, you just set it off to the side and you said, oh, okay, I'll remember <laughs> that it's sharp and still sewing worthy. Hmm, do you really remember? <laughs> Okay, so I have a little tip on how to know whether your used needle, your slightly used needle, is still sewing worthy. So you can take your, your needle and you can run it across your needle, your, uh, your thumbnail. And if it leaves a scratch, well, you know you've got a burr. And so what are you going to do? You're going to toss that needle and get a new one. Or if you have a pair of old um, hoes, and I'll tell you what, after this pandemic, I am never wearing hose again. I will wear tights, but never hose again. So if you have a pair of old hose, tights, or maybe a jersey fabric, you can run the needle point across your fabric. And if it snags, you know you've got a burr and you just need to toss it. So bottom line is needles don't last forever. You're in charge of changing it. You know, the needle is actually a repair that you can make yourself. How do you do that? Well, you just use your fingers or maybe a screwdriver to loosen that screw and tighten it up again. Or maybe you have a little lever that you push up or down to change the needle. So when your machine starts making funny sounds and you think, oh, no, I need to take my machine in for maintenance. What's the first thing your tech is going to say? Yeah, your tech is going to say, okay, yeah, when's the last time you changed your needle? <laughs> and if it's been a while, what's the first thing your tech is going to do? Yeah, they're going to change the needle to see if that um, knocking sound is still, um, still um, making the sound. So change the needle. Absolutely. Change the needle. They don't last forever. Okay, well, um, let me see. All right, so I mentioned the Smets ABC Pocket Guide. So if you've got your bundles already, bravo. I'm so excited that you can do your piecing and your quilting. Um, and you've got your little Smets ABC Pocket Guide. So let me just walk this through, um, walk you through it real quick. Here is the diagram. We have our own center fold with the parts of the needle with an explanation of their functions plus that wonderful diagram about the eyes of a needle. So now you don't have to remember that the embroidery top stitch and the metallic have enlarged eyes or larger eyes. So there's less stress on the thread as it's passing through the eye of the needle. Also in uh, the Smets ABC Pocket Guide, we've got the color chart. So it's always handy for you. So just as um, a review, what does the top color band uh, represent? 
The top color band is going to identify your needle type and the lower color band will identify your needle size. If there's just one band of color, well, you've got a universal, um, so you can identify the needle size, um, 80 if it's orange, 90, 14 if it's, it's blue. All right, then on our inside um, front cover, we've got a picture of your little Smets pack so that you can remember or uh, refresh your memory, your memory as to what all those numbers and letters mean. So your needle size is always at the bottom of your package. And what's above that? 13705H, what does that mean? That's your needle system. And it means that your needle has a flat shank and this scarf. And 99% of all of our home sewing machines require a needle system 13705H. Then we've um, photographed all the different needle types. We tell you what sizes are available, what the special features are, the color codes, um, any special fabric uses, etc. And at the bottom of page six is a little reference, what needle to use with what fabric. So now you don't have to remember. So this um, goes, um, is on the, fo the footer for about the next 10 or 12 pages or so. So lots of information um, in here. Now, if you haven't bought your, your uh, Smith's uh, Piecing and Quilting Bundle yet from uh, Patched Works and Julie, well, I'll tell you what, I'll let you know that you can download the free Smets app. If you can't wait to get your actual needle bundle from Julie, you can get the free app. You can just go to the iStore or to Google Play, type in Smets, S-C-H-M-E-T-Z, and the free app will pop right up. So the same information that is in um, the pocket guide is also in your free app. But one of the things I like about the app is it has more than 80 fabrics listed in the app. So now you can just click a fabric and it'll suggest what needle type and size to use. So, and I will be right up front with you. The Smets app is a looking a little bit tired. <laughs> you know, needles don't really change that much. <laughs> That's the good news. Um, so the app is probably five or six years old. And so one of our tasks this year is to update the, um, the app, hopefully before the, the end of the year. So stay tuned for that. So, okay, Julie, any more questions? We've covered a lot of territory here. <laughs> we have covered a lot. And there's just, oh, my goodness, thank you so much for all of this great information. A couple things, since we do have to change our needles frequently. What do you recommend we do with them? Okay, yes, changing your needle. How do you dispose of your yes. needle? Okay, um, well, we don't have any specific directions on how to dispose of them. However, the, um, the actual needle is steel. So in many of your recy community recycling, um, you can uh, recycle them through your local recycling plant. I suggest that you collect them in an Altoid tin or maybe in an old prescription um, bottle, collect them all at one time and then turn them over. If you're disposing of a single needle, then I suggest that you uh, put the single needle in um, between some cardboard. So now when your, um, your trash is picked up by the garbage person, they're not gonna get stuck accidentally. The other thing is the actual uh, little plastic chip is recyclable also. Now I would guess that probably within the next year, you'll see some changes to um, the actual packaging and also to the cards and it will be more clearly marked that everything is recyclable, but that's the way it is right now. So yes, your needle and your pack are recyclable, but you do need to check with your community uh, rules because every community is a little bit different. Thank you. And you referenced the book and 
Fran asked, what are spring needles and yeah. are they easy to use? Okay, let me go to that page, spring needles. That's page 36, right across from your, um, your dull <clears throat> needle. <laughs> A spring needle. Let me see if I can get this up. This is what it looks like, a spring needle. All right. It's not a very common needle. The history behind the spring needle is that the spring needle was specifically designed for older machines that didn't have all the fancy feet for darning, for machine embroidery, etc. So it's a regular Smets needle, it could be a universal, a denim, et cetera. There's four different needle types that the spring needle is available in. It has a spring similar to a spring that you might find in a ballpoint pen, except that it's conical shaped. It's an elongated triangle. At the top and at the bottom of the spring, there are little plastic stoppers. So, to use the spring needle, you need to remove your foot, the machine foot. Now you insert the spring needle. Now you can see where you're doing free motion quilting, free motion embroidery, darning, etc. Now the um, spring needle is, um, it takes tenacity to look, to look, to get it under control. I know people use it. Uh, we sell them. Is it a popular needle? No. <laughs> but why not have some fun with, with your needle? So give it a try. It comes in denim, embroidery, quilting, stretch, and universal in a variety of, of sizes. So yeah, have fun with your needles. And speaking of uh, specialty needles, do twin needles have as many varieties and sizes as well? Yes, twin needles. You know, um, a couple years a couple years ago, I did um, I did some um, controlled testing in our offices, and I had outside people who sew hobbyists who love to sew, and they brought their own sewing machines, and um, it was a survey and a test to see how much they knew about needles and and their machines. And what was surprising is that. Um, especially people who had older machines, older, you know, older than 10 years. <laughs> but some of those workhorse machines that were really built to last didn't realize that they could use a twin needle. And even people with newer needle, new, newer machines didn't realize that they could use a twin needle. So let me just show you a quick picture. A twin needle. Here's a picture of a, um, a twin needle where you have two like needles on a single shank and there's a little plastic bar here. So um, a twin needle, you're going to get parallel stitches. You're also going to use two spools of thread. One of the um, suggestions, uh, tips to using a twin needle is that when you use two spools of thread, that one spool unwind off the top of your, your um, spool where the other um, spool unwind from the bottom up. Or if you're using horizontal spools of thread, one unwinds from the back and the other um, off the, off the left-hand side. That way, when the threads come through the tension discs, they're going to play nice together. <laughs> So you have less conflict, uh, less tension uh, within the tension disc. So sometimes when you use the twin needle, you also need to adjust your tension and also your stitch length. You also need to make sure that um, your stitch plate, your throat plate is wide enough to accommodate your twin needle. So if you're just doing straight stitches, that's easy to determine. But if you're using um, a stitch that maybe swings out to the left or the right, maybe it's a zigzag or a loop-de-loop, -loop, whatever the, the design is, you need to make sure that your stitch does not swing out past your, um, your, um, your throat plate hole. Otherwise, now you're gonna have a broken needle. <laughs> 
So yeah, twin needle, don't be afraid of it. Um, gosh, it just makes a world of difference for embellishing, echo quilting, and certainly when you're doing hymns. Good question. Echo quilting, that never occurred to me. I'm gonna have to go and try that one. Yes, yes. <laughs> Actually, you know what? I've, I've been sitting on a quilt project for hmm, 15 years maybe. Um, the top is done and I'm gonna say, it was done beautifully. It needs the quilting. And for t 10 years, I've been on the, on the line. Do I send it out to somebody else and just get it done? Or do, it, do I do it myself? Well, the thing is, I want to do twin needle quilting. And it's an Irish chain. There's one inch Irish chain blocks. And I'm thinking, really, with a twin needle, that's a lot of seams to go through. It could be a real test for me, and I just can't make that decision. But maybe you can do that. <laughs> I think you're up for the task, Deronda. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you, during this pandemic, I actually finished over 15 UFOs. Oh, well, I shouldn't. I finished actually 15 projects, and several of those were UFOs. One was um, one inch half square triangles, thangles. I had over a thousand of them. So I finished that, that project was 17 years old and I finished it in three days. In fact, let me just give you a, a little hint of it. Over 1,000 one inch half square thangles. <laughs> one year I made 50, over 15 um, Christmas quilts. So these were the scraps, and so I got involved with thangles, and I cut out all these half square triangles. And let me just tell you, thangles were lickety split. I loved it, but I had all these single units just uh, waiting in a salad bowl <laughs> for all these years. And so during the pandemic, it was the first project that I finished. I put it together, and I love, love, love showing it. And in fact, I even sh uh, have different ways that I showed how the thangles could come together. I thought I had extra thangles and then I needed these last four blocks that I just sampled and I thought, you know what? It just makes the quilt hanging uh, more, more interesting. So <laughs> that was one of my projects. Another one was a 15 year old um, Sashiko quilt. I had 48 12 inch um, indigo blue hand stitch sashiko panels. And I, my mom did 12 of the panels, I did the rest, and they've just been laying in the, oh, these drawers right behind me. They've just been in the drawer for 15 years. And you know what? I put the, I laid it out on the floor and I sewed it up probably within three hours. <laughs> I, I decided not to actually put a binding on. I love the full the full quilt look, uh, look. So I just surged with black thread and it looks fabulous. So if you're curious as to looking at some of my um, sewing from 2020 um, or 2021 sewing, you can go to my personal blog, which is sewmorestitches.com. I'm not selling anything. I'm not... I don't even try to be a great writer. I only blog a couple times a week. Uh, but if you click 2020 sewing and 2021 sewing, then you can see um, the projects that I finished, including behind me. Oh, you, you'll see um, some close-ups of the, um, the four-inch log cabin <laughs> quilt that I have um, behind me. I don't know what year I finished that. That was many years ago. I first started the blog um, years ago um, because I was traveling so much and I meet so many wonderful people like Julie and buyers and all kinds of manufacturers. And um, I really get inspired by everyone that I meet and I try to capture them on picture in pictures. So I take lots of pictures. So I was sharing them on sewmorestitches.com. So if you have time, go in and take, take a look um, and you can see. I made some dresses. I made a beautiful uh, Shannon fabric double gauze jacket. Well, bottom line is I love to sew and quilt.
And of course, I use all my blog posts when I talk about sewing. Of course, I do stage uh, Smet's products. <laughs> That's well, so awesome. awesome. Any more questions, Julie? We well, don't have any more. I want to say thank you for inviting me here. Julie, I hope to come up to your store. Maybe I can still do it yet this year because Illinois has opened up. <laughs> and I hope Wisconsin is too. In fact, I just got my second COVID uh, vaccination over the weekend. So I am fully vaccinated and ready to travel. You know, um, I want to say thanks to each of you for being here tonight. Um, I realize you probably can't believe that you just spent an hour listening about sewing machine needles, but you know, needles aren't glamorous. They're not sexy and they're not romantic, right? But you can't use your fabulous machines without a Smets needle. So thank you for joining me here tonight. Where are you going to buy your Smets needles? You're going to go to Julie. You're going to go to Julie to Patched Works, Patched Works, support her she's got a fabulous store and she's looking out for you bringing in new products and of course smith's needles <laughs> well thank you so much for being our very first uh guest on our for our video presentations i really appreciate you being here tonight with us okay bye bye <laughs>